Um, thank you for um, let, allowing me to be here. Um, I'm giving the last talk today, the last talk between you and discussion. And it's been, it's been great so far. Today I'll talk about um, simulations of fuzzy dark matter, which I was really excited that we heard two talks today, this morning on this topic. So I'm going to talk a bit about cosmological simulations with the illustrious model um, coupled to fuzzy dark matter. And also, um, we're going to look at some of the big physical properties of this uh, model. And this is work in collaboration with a lot of people, including a few names I highlighted at the bottom. Uh, Victor Robles, who is here. And also, um, in the orange are some of the students I've worked with. Two of them are really brilliant undergraduates applying for graduate school um, next this year. So to motivate um, this talk, I want to ask this question of what is dark matter? We still do not know what it is for nearly a century. So um, about 100 years ago, we have evidence for it from uh, rotation curves. And, it's, and cold dark matter has been really good at predicting large scale structure and is consistent with the CMB. There is also evidence for dark matter from galaxies that where you infer has no dark matter. But we don't know what is the actual uh, possibly uh, particle that makes up this dark matter. So it can range from a bunch of things. There's cold dark matter, um, for which no direct evidence yet exists. Um, but the masses around a GeV. There are alternatives such as warm dark matter with KeV mass. And what I'm going to be talking about today, fuzzy dark matter, which is an ultralight uh, spin zero boson with a mass around 10 to the minus 22 EV. So much smaller than, an than the electron, which is highlighted on this dark matter ruler. So here we are assuming that dark matter is an ultralight scalar field. In the early universe, it forms uh, Bose Einstein condensate with zero temperature. And because the particle mass is so small, um, it has a de Broglie wavelength that is on order kiloparsec and starts affecting um, cosmic structure. So the uncertainty principle basically suppresses gravitational collapse below this de Broglie wavelength. You get interesting structures such as uh, solid on cores, where the quantum pressure supports against gravity. Uh, which we heard about this morning. And the equations for the scalar field reduced to the Schrodinger Poisson um, equations in the non relativistic limit. So I've highlighted that here. Um, the, the dark matter scalar field is described simply by this complex wave function psi, normalized such that psi squared gives the dark matter density. And so motivation for fuzzy dark matter comes from a bunch of different axes. So first of all, this model, it's identical to cold dark matter on large scales, but on small scales, you've introduced this new exotic physics. And some of the motivation is to pick some of these small scale challenges of cold dark matter um, highlighted here. Uh, basically, um, the cusp core problem, which um, James talked about today, and also um, problems with the statistics in the abundance of dwarf galaxies and, and, and their internal structure. So there is also motivation from theoretical physics. These ultralight um, axions are predicted um, to solve the strong CP problem. In QCD, the axion is a natural candidate for fuzzy dark matter. There is also, they also arise in string theory compactification theories. You can get a whole class of axions with different particle masses. There is constraints from the cosmic microwave background on the particle mass. Um, basically, you cannot have the mass to be too small, otherwise you suppress um, large K power in the initial dark matter power spectrum of the early universe, and you're inconsistent with the CMB. So in some ways, this model behaves a lot like warm dark matter, where you have a cut in your initial power spectrum, you suppress uh, forming small scale power. Uh, um, you, you suppress forming small scale structure. There's also constraints from the Lyman Alpha Forest, which basically, um, it's, an, it's another measure of the um, dark matter power spectrum. And the constraints say that the particle mass has to be around 10 to the minus 21 EV or larger. Otherwise, you don't get enough uh, power on megaparsec scales at redshift five to be consistent with the Lyman Alpha Forest. 
Of course, there's a number of assumptions that go into this model, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But fuzzy dark matter has also been applied to studying um, the potentials of um, dwarf spheroidal galaxies, such as Fornax and Sculptor, which are very cored. And it's hard to explain um, this structure in the theory of lambda CDM. So when you model these, um, the, the velocity dispersion of the stars in one of these soliton cores, then you can fit the, um, you can fit the, fit for the axion mass and, and the soliton core radius. And these, this data prefers um, axion masses of around 10 to the minus 22 eV. So you see that there's already a little bit of tension um, in what some of the different constraints give you. Um, this is a summary of a bunch of recent papers. There's been an explosion of interest in this model. They're, they're trying to put constraints on the axion mass on various scales. Um, down here on the left, these are dwarf spherical constraints. On the right, you have Lyman alpha forest um, and a few other things um, such as, um, so I'll just highlight one of these. Um, so in Church et al., um, with my student, we looked at how quantum fluctuations would heat um, dynamical, um, the, the old stellar disk in the Milky Way. And that's, that's an open problem. So how does the old stellar disk get its thickness? Um, the fuzzy dark matter would add um, dynamical heating, but it also cannot be too much, otherwise the disk would be too thick. Oh, okay, oh yeah, this is what's allowed. The bars are what's allowed. And of course, each of these models have a bunch of assumptions. So it is important to test um, and constrain the axion mass on as many different scales as possible, just in case if some of the assumptions are incorrect in some of these works. So let's go on to um, simulations of fuzzy dark matter structure in the early universe, um, highlighted here. Um, so first of all, because you have this cut in an initial power spectrum, you suppress a lot of the, um, the subhalos that form uh, below a certain mass. And another thing you, you see is um, you see quantum interference patterns in the cosmic filaments. And finally, the interior of halos highlighted here, they have a soliton core at the center, and surrounding it is um, uh, quantum interference patterns, uh, fluctuations which is one of the key characteristic differences between fuzzy dark matter and cold dark matter. So these simulations are full physics, um, baryons coupled to uh, fuzzy dark matter, including all the quantum wave effects um, in, the, in the illustrious, um, I'm using the, the illustrious feedback um, physics. We start with initial conditions uh, for the power spectrum generated by axion cam. Um, these simulations that I show you use five million uh, core hours on STAMP-E2. The limitation is that um, stud, um, evolving the, the, Schrodinger, the Schrodinger Poisson equations is very memory intensive, so um, we're limited to high redshift and two megaparsec boxes here. So it's, it's, we're looking at first structures. What would they look like with JWST? Okay, so to highlight the uh, big picture, we are comparing fuzzy dark matter, warm dark matter, and cold dark matter, um, evolving it to redshift six. Cold dark matter, it's scale free. You form subhalos on all scales um, in the cosmic filaments. It's unstable. With warm dark matter and fuzzy dark matter, you've introduced a cut off in your initial power spectrum, so you don't form halos below a minimum mass. But um, um, so, so that's why you, you have erased a lot of the structure. And on large scales like this, they look very similar. But if we zoom into the details, um, this is showing a slice through a cosmic web filament on a scale of uh, 0.5 megaparsec. There's a mistake on the bottom. Um, so, so, as I've mentioned, um, cold dark matter forms subhalos on all scales. Warm dark matter has these really rich caustic structures um, from your face sheets winding up. And then in fuzzy dark matter on the bottom, um, you have these interference patterns caused by wave effects. So when, you, when your phase sheet is only um, crossed a few times, these interference patterns are actually quite coherent um, and ordered. And once, you're, um, once they've crossed multiple times, um, they've, you can get quite chaotic 
um, looking interference patterns at the centers of halos. And so yeah, here's a summary, again, to put everything into context. Um, the entire box is shown on the left for these three different models. We're highlighting um, first structures, the dark matter, gas, and stars. And another interesting thing is that, so when you put a cut in the initial power spectrum, your first structures that you form are filamentary um, rather than spherical like halos. And then these filaments are actually deep enough to collect gas and form stars actually continuously along, along the filament. So this has been known for warm dark matter. It also turns out to be true for fuzzy dark matter. So these, these, um, these stretched um, filamentary uh, first galaxies, uh, so this, so, um, quote unquote, are one of the predictions um, um, of fuzzy and warm dark matter, which could be visible with JWST. Uh, if you look at the detailed structure of these filaments, um, there's a big difference between warm dark matter and fuzzy dark matter. So the quantum pressure is actually responsible for supporting the, the um, central spine of these filaments. And your initial solution is cylindrical. Um, so in two dimensions, this, this, soli this soliton-like support is unstable, and then you end up fragmenting and, and producing soliton cores along the filament. Um, so, and then importantly, the, the gas distribution follows the, the dark matter distribution very closely um, for these first structures. If we look at the dark matter power spectrum, um, warm dark matter and fuzzy dark matter sort of approximate itself, um, each other quite well. Um, there's, of course, a large suppression power compared to cold dark matter. But there is a big difference on tens of kiloparsecs of scales, where fuzzy dark matter predicts an excess of power due to interference patterns. So again, I just wanted to highlight that some of these first structures look quite filamentary in the fuzzy dark matter and warm dark matter models. Yeah, and and they, they, if you run the simulation longer, they do end up looking like regular galaxies uh, later on. So to summarize, um, these first galaxies probe the physical small scale nature of the dark matter particle. And with new observations, we'll get an observational window into this emergent world. And to summarize, you know, these um, stars would form along dense filaments. And these filaments are, the structure, internal structure are dictated by the quantum um, pressure, and the gas in the stars trace this core, um, core dark matter profile. So that's, so to, um, finally to finish um, my presentation, I just wanted to highlight that we're thinking about a lot of different physical aspects of this problem. So we, so today I talked about large scale, um, but there's a lot of small scale effects that this fuzzy dark matter has. So for example, with the introduction of the quantum pressure um, the, the properties of dynamical friction change significantly. So these are um, to the students I've worked with. Um, so dynamical friction is greatly reduced, generally, compared to cold dark matter. Um, we're also thinking about the structure of these solitons in the presence of supermassive black holes, where um, the black hole mass sets the structure, and you get something that actually looks like the Bohr hydrogen atom ground state in the limit of large black hole masses. And finally, I've mentioned the dynamical heating work by um, Ben Church um, et al. from Columbia, where the interference patterns would thicken the galactic disk of the Milky Way. Okay, thank you for your time. I'm happy to take questions. So uh, um, there are samples today of uh, galaxies at Redshift 6, mm -hmm. you know, star-forming galaxies that count by the thousands now. Uh, have you considered whether you could already say something uh, constraining some of the fuzzy dark matter uh, models using uh, okay. those galaxies? Yeah, so, so these are really, um, okay, so, so the quantum, um, so I think that 
where you'd see these these stringy filaments are really, really um, well. So so we put this data into some uh, pipelines for um, making mock images for JWST, and they're barely obser um, observable. This is really um, you really need to be sensitive to um, low mass halos, first objects, and they're going to be barely um, just just at the um, threshold for JWST. And then if you go to higher mass halos, then um, maybe like so, some of what's been observed, then that's going to look more like cold dark matter. So it's harder to constrain the model there. So it's very really nice. Um, I was intrigued by the uh, statement that the uh, spine of the filaments mm -hmm. was unstable. Oh, yes. So is that a statement based on what you see in the simulation? No, no, no. So there's no or, or it just it lies above the, the critical line mass that you have in, in standard dynamics? Or, there, or? there is no stable Salton solution in 2D. So you can show that. Okay. Um, you can solve for this ground state solution. You can go into the simulation and see that it's there. But then you can do some perturbation analysis, and, and it's, it's, it's an unstable solution. And then you do see this happening in the simulations, too, where this uh, two-dimensional cylindrical quantum pressure-supported core goes unstable and forms solitons. So, so, so that means then that if those if those go unstable and produce solitons and, and, and subsequently halos, then mm -hmm. what yep. people have done is use basically a projector approach to predict the mass function mm -hmm. in fuzzy dark matter just using the, the, the cutoff due to the quantum mm -hmm. pressure. That's not sufficient. Cause yeah, so, yeah. So, so how significant is this contribution ah, from okay, these yeah. fragments? Okay, so yeah, that, that's a great point. So I think that um, it's maybe it's not so significant because, well, so warm dark matter and Fuzzy dark matter here was giving similar um, uh, halos at the edge of six. So, but, but warm dark matter, you get artificial fragmentation. Oh yes, you can actually see that in, in our simulations right. too. So you get these beads of stars. Um, but um, yeah, that, that's a really good thing. I, I'd like to think about some more. Yeah. Question? Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Lyman alpha force constraints on mm -hmm. small scales. Is there a tension there? My understanding is that for warm dark matter, it's, yeah, it's there is basically tension, ruled so. out. And how about fuzzy dark matter? Yeah, so yeah, that's what I'm showing here. If we look at, um, OK, so here we have, um, this is for a 10 to the minus uh, 21 particle mass. Um, CDM predictions are in thick lines. Um, it's a bit, this is a bit fuzzy image, um, but then data, you see the data points, and then these dashed lines are the fuzzy dark matter predictions, um, but these predictions were made without ignoring the quantum wave effects. So this is basically a warm dark matter um, model, and then, so with the quantum wave effects, well, we're, we're trying to quantify this right now, it would move these lines uh, further up and decrease the tension, but there's still some tension, um, which is hard to resolve, so it does place a strong constraint on the axion mass. Okay, let's thank all the speakers again. Okay.